I received a few questions uh, regarding contact with spirits and um, one of the questions um, regarded to why is there, are there warnings against dealing with spirits. I want to go into that a little. Um, in order to make a contact with anything you need to be on either the same or an adjacent yeah, level of energy. So just like light has a, has a spectrum and like a small part of it we can see, this is the visible light, and we have infrared, ultraviolet, radio waves, uh, so there's also a lot of the spectrum we cannot see. In the same way our current existence in our physical self is but a minuscule part of that spectrum of all these different types of beings, types of energies. And in order to make contact with a spirit or some other entity we need to in a way shift our perception a little bit towards their part of the spectrum. So you could say a little bit above us would be uh, spirits. They are pretty much the same still, almost the same vibration, but they don't have the limitations of the physical body. And the further up you move, you move towards uh, uh, greater spirit guides, um, power animals, um, collective consciousness, uh, choirs, uh, deities, angels, uh, ascended masters, and so on and so forth. Um, down we can also go. So there's also earthbound spirits and uh, elemental spirits, nature spirits, and all these different lower vibrations. One of the reasons why we should be a little bit cautious with this is that things tend to flow from one side to the other. Um, it's kind of like you can have a kind of a pure mixture of your own energy, of your own vibration. And as soon as you start blending in energies from above and below, that mixture will get diluted. It will get more similar to that higher or lower vibration. Um, so by doing this, we become more and more, you could say, uh, polluted, unsuitable for our normal everyday existence on our current level of being. So a person who takes in these higher energies, yes they may have a lot of spiritual development or move towards enlightenment, um, but it will be quite hard for such a person to deal with everyday life here. Same when a person takes in these lower energies, they also become, yeah, you could say, maladapted to their yeah, normal everyday um, society they live in. Besides this um, yeah, change of your own uh, energy, energetic vibration which, uh, which happens, um, also other influences can murk through you. So you are also becoming an instrument for these forces on other levels which cannot act directly upon our world. But if you work with them you can become like a bridge for them so they can work upon a world through you so you're in a way translating their influence to uh, perform in our world and this is something which can be done of course in a very positive sense like artists are doing um, and also many philosophers and scientists are doing um, but such a connection can also turn you yeah not only into a bridge but even a tool for such other powers. So before engaging in this contact with the other worlds you have to be aware of what the, the price will be, what the cost will be um, in your yeah, change because you will become different, more attuned to working with them and that also means by definition that you will be less attuned to, to this world. There's a limited amount of energy which your energy body can contain. So your energy tends not to simply increase by uh, working with another world, but rather to yeah, just to change its consistency. There's also a limit to how much different things one can harmoniously blend together. 
before it turns into chaos. So there's also a risk of insanity if you start working with too many different energies, too many different vibrations. Um, there's also a risk of exhaustion, stress, um, harm to your physical body or your energetic body because it is very hard to juggle with these yeah, larger range of energies to find a place for them in your body. And usually the body can adapt to working with this higher energy. So you can build new reservoirs, new energy channels, reroute your own energetic flows, but it's always an, ad an adaptation which comes at a cost. And also if the change goes too quickly, too rapidly, um, there might occur yeah, damage. You might get really um, overcharged with a certain energy and certain existing energy channels can get blocked or damaged. So it is risky to work with uh, vibrations outside of your own realm. That doesn't mean by definition that we are yeah, stuck in this like limited physical consciousness. It is just that we have to be aware of the dangers and try to take this process of extending our consciousness um, yeah, un either under guidance or step by step and not to try to delve too deeply before we are ready. You always need to stabilize yourself first and from this stable and harmonic state you can reach upward and get a new impulse. And then your stability, your harmony gets disrupted by this new impulse so you need some time to find a new balance. Once you've found this new balance, once you're stable again, then you can reach out again. So it is actually the best if we only reach out to these other worlds if we are in a very stable and harmonious state. Um, unfortunately many people do it in quite the opposite manner. They have a problem they cannot resolve, they are afraid, they are angry, uh, they are desperate and from this state of great instability um, they open up to whatever is willing to help them. Um, and often they cannot deal with they encounter them when they open up. Um, so this is a very dangerous and harmful way to uh, to relate to these other worlds. Uh, it's always you could say you should always negotiate from a position of strength. And if you make contact with this other world without needing it, then you can just be the person who is researching it, who's curious about it, um, who's not in a position to be abused, uh, to be in a way pushed aside with their own will and used as an instrument um, because they hold very little power over you. You can just leave their world um, and feel fine about it and be fine with that. If however you come to their world yeah, needing help and you know, begging for assistance then you're in a position to be exploited by these other powers and that the power exists on another level of consciousness, another level of energy, doesn't mean that they're completely altruistic. It doesn't mean that they don't have their own agendas. And of course it's possible to find a win-win situation where both of you will benefit. But it's easier to find such a win-win situation if you're already in a position of strength. So it is important that before you start your astral travels or attempts to contact other worlds, that you make sure that your body is rested and also that uh, negative influences from these other worlds won't easily penetrate uh, into your energy body while you're traveling or through the contact you're making. So it is good if that uh, place which you use for your meditations or your prayers is already blessed, already has a very positive nurturing energy. So you could say that all the holes and the gaps in your energy body are already filled up with these positive energies. There's no gaps in you into which other entities could easily slip into. It's also good to create a protective circle around you which filters out negative influences and also to ask maybe one of your uh, spirit guides or ancestors, power animals um, or maybe a saint or a deity you have a good relationship with to watch over you 
while you're doing this traveling. You can also ask the earth to sustain your body, to take care of it. So that in a way your body is left not alone or unguarded, but under the protection of these forces while your attention, while your focus is shifting away from this world. It is not only that your energy body is at risk from the powers you're contacting, but also from the powers which are in your environment. So if your neighbor is having some yeah, nasty spirits in his or her room, then these could also slip in while in a way your attention is focused away on other dimensions and your energy body is in a state of disbalance by going into the contact with these other dimensions. Um, it is okay to work with these other energies and to incorporate their yeah, vibration into your own energy body. But it's also good to be a little bit selective and be aware also that if something should happen to you and you yeah, loosen your mortal coil, you, the state of your energy body will determine which yeah, position you will have in the afterlife. What thing will attract you, what state of awareness will attract you. And um, by building up a relationship with a certain power, you will end up more or less uh, at least closer to that power. So if I would spend all my life um, worshipping, for instance, um, Hecate, uh, the goddess of magic, it's very likely that through this interaction my energy body would get very tuned to her and I uh, would end up as one of her uh, students or one of her servants after leaving my physical body. Um, so the power you work with, in a way the friends you build, the company you build, will be the company you will keep in uh, after this life and probably then also in the next incarnation. And this can be used, of course, to secure um, a safe place where you will be uh, welcomed and supported in this transition of letting go of the current incarnation and preparing for the next one. Many people yeah, become a member of a spiritual choir, an egregore, also for this reason, so that their powers which they bring with them from their incarnation can be given to the group and this group can then give these powers back to you in the next incarnation or teach you about your powers which you have forgotten in the next incarnation or use them for you um, if you don't reincarnate those same abilities. So this is a way of, in a way, yeah, having a kind of a spiritual bank account um, with such a, a spiritual choir. Also by working with a deity you can um, get more stability in your incarnations. Uh, deity is in a way a teacher who's helping you to develop a certain quality and usually one lifetime is too little to really develop a quality to a high degree and by devoting yourself to this ideal, to developing this quality, to um, mastering these aspects which the deity is, uh, is teaching, you can often also be uh, guided to have a series of lives like which can be four lives, seven lives, even 10 or 20 lives in which you will become more and more adept at this and you will get closer and closer to the deity and will ultimately also become uh, a priest or a priestess for this deity bringing these teachings to other people who um, are less adept at it. So this can also be a very valuable tool to um, reconnect to the path you were already on, if you feel a certain connection with a deity or a saint, um, then this may be, may be just a continuation from this already pre-existing yeah, attunement or mix of higher energies or lower energies which are already existent in the energy body. The reason for uh, working with higher energies is often to get more understanding, to get more harmony, to get more insights reason for working with lower energies is usually to get more power, to get more effect, um, to get more 
ability to exert control. And we need a little bit of both. If I would be only in very high vibration, I would yeah, maybe understand everything, but I would be powerless. If I'm in a very low vibration, I would be like a raging bull in a, in a bullfight. Like I have, would have a lot of power, but no ability to guide it in a wise way. Um, I would lose the yeah, perspective, long-sightedness, and would just go after this yeah, red flag waving in front of my eyes. So there's a lot of power, but very little yeah, ability for insight and self-control and self-discipline. We are here both to learn, to gain more understanding, but we're also here to act. So we need both these higher and lower powers, and we need them in different um, amounts, in different stages of our lives. Generally, while we're young, we're very active in manifestation, so we tend to have more need for lower energies, lower powers. When we get older, our ability to manifest is less, because we are simply lacking the energy and the flexibility to really use situations to our advantage. And we become more philosophical in nature and we start engaging ourselves more in working with these higher energies, reading about philosophy, um, studying, praying more. So this is also a natural shift which happens all through our lives. So I hope that this has given some understanding as to the how and why we should or shouldn't work with these uh, powers and the effects we can expect from them.